looking at the painting uh, it is by the raft of the Medusa and it is a uh, French and it is an oil painting it was made between 1818 and 1819 by the French Romantic painter um, Theodore Giricault. Now, we, we see this being a painting that is involving the... Oh, and I'm joined here today by my myself and, and Thomas. Hello. Uh, and we'll be discussing the painting and its um, its many significances. Now, now uh, first, what do we see in this painting, Thomas? looks like there's a struggle occurring. A struggle, yes, yes. It looks like there's great turmoil. Um, they, they, they all seem to be pretty much uh, panicking, but we also see uh, a glimmer of hope, which we'll see later in the in the painting. But um, So let's have some background for this painting really quick. Um, during the time, this is after the French Revolution happened and after Napoleon has fell, fallen, and we, we see that the monarchies actually in Europe have been restored. Uh, after the Council of Vienna, and th this, this especially in um, France, the monarchy has been restored in France, and Lu and um, King Louis has been reappointed, um, has been appointed to be the King of France, and we we kind of see Theodore trying to give us a commentary on maybe the indictment of the monarchy, um, may maybe a uh, trying to show us how the monarchy can be corrupt. Would you agree with that? I would. Yes, and. So, th we see in this painting there was actually a shipwreck, and there was a ship. It was a uh, a royal frigate, French royal frigate actually, that went called the Medusa, hence the name of the painting. That was from France. That was bound to a place in Africa. It was a French colony actually called Senegal. It used to be British, Af but um, the uh, British took it over from Napoleon, and then it became France. They gave it back. Anyways, so this this sh frigate went. They had a captain appointed by the um, the king, who this is very important because this shows how the king is being corrupt himself. But he appoints someone who simply he likes, and this man he's extremely unskilled, and he decides to to sail the boat, and he gives it to control uh, to someone else who's even lesser and doesn't know what they're doing, and they get into a storm and they crash. They, fashion, they make the carpenter fashion a, a raft that can hold 150 people, but they didn't have enough lifeboats, and that's the main reason why they had to do that. The uh, royal family that I was carrying, including the royal family, the governor, decided to go on the lifeboat along with the captain, and the captain thought they were slowing them, so they decided to cut the thing off, and they were stranded in the ocean. So that's why we see them all stranded in the ocean. That guy doesn't sound like... Uh very nice. <laughs> no, not at all. He's uh, showing the, the corruption of the uh, the monarchy. So I think that's one of the major goals that we're actually seeing. Now, um, let's really quickly look at what's going on. We can kind of see some optimism going from left to right. We can see how, from the left, we see a man with his dying son. It's very sad. But as we go to the right and the right, we see people who who are continually making kind of like a pyramid, a whole body, that are actually... They, they're a symbol of hope, because they see, if you can see in the very, very... Uh, the, in the very in the distance, you can see that little that little ship that's actually going to rescue them because they have a ship coming to rescue them from this horribleness. Now um, we can see there's a, a huge shift in a bunch of different uh, areas, venues that are making this instead of a neoclassical painting, it's shifting towards romanticism. Uh, it's on a first of all, it's not religious or historical. It's actually it's a, it's on a contemporary subject, which is very different. Um, that's one of the reasons why people were enraged by this painting when it came out. Um, also, it, it, in a way, it contrasts, not contrasts, it, it connects greatly. We can see how the artist had lots of influence by other artists, such as Caravaggio. If you look in the painting, in, in the Raft of the Medusa, we can see that there's a turmoil of the splashing waves through his short breaststrokes in the water. He created this, this vivid tension in the figures using this, these short brushstrokes and this effective shading. You can see this shading all in the clouds in the sky. He even uses dark colors to portray this somber scene. Now, we, we see how this this contrast between light and dark represents Caravaggio, so it's an uh, uh, influence from the past. And he also, as we see these bodies all in, in the front, just moving together as one, that's that it's extremely similar to the Baroque art that we've studied previously. Now, another interesting thing, would you agree with this, that it the painting's literally just washing into our face. It's just coming off this, the paint. It's popping out. 
yeah, yeah, it's it's the, he he spent so much time on this um, when he was painting this in in France um, um, at a, near, a hospital near his his home. But I also feel like this greatly connects to some of the philosophers that during the time. Like if we look at a French philosopher named Hobbes, are, are you familiar with him? Yes, I am. Uh, he he actually one of his major beliefs was that the human nature is is corrupt and evil and horrible, and we can see this because uh, do you want to explain the cannibalism that went on in this painting? Well, it appears as though there is some cannibalism going on. At, some uh, dead bodies. Bottom, yes, and it looks like they're using cannibalism to survive. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, they're they're actually using this cannibalism to they were stranded on the boat for 15 days. They had no food. They had their barrel of biscuits in one day, so they started eating each other, and it's just showing how people are insane in a way. They're they're like Hobbes said, they're just not they're their their human nature is disgusting and violent. And this can also connect another major theme, the second major theme other than the indictment of the monarchy that I think this can connect to, is the fact that this is showing the power of nature. Now, the the power of nature, it's just it, it's showing how look at these waves. You see how they just engulf the raft. The water's washing up to the raft. They appear to do so. Yeah, yeah, they, they just, they just, it, it looks like it's just conquering it. It's just showing how it's much more powerful than man, as we've seen in many other paintings. Uh, how, and that's one of the actual huge views in Romanticism, and it even connects to some Romantic poets. Um, for example, the poem, The Convergence of the Train about the ti Twain about the Titanic. That's a, basically the, almost the exact same story as this. We see nature actually just conquering and being much more powerful. We, we saw in the Conversions of Twain how it hit an iceberg. Here, it's, they're stranded on a boat. And uh, and the, nature is just conquering them. So I feel like that's another huge um, huge part in this painting, a huge one of his major goals in this painting to do this. Now, as I stated earlier, this did not get the best rep because people thought it was it was outlandish. They thought it was it was crazy. And... Um, but in the end, it would lead to romanticism, and it would actually set the bridge to another revolution in 1830. That it would set the, the, the stone for that. And in, in that way, it's, it's, it's beautiful that it represents so much, and it, it's, mean, it's going to mean so much in the future.